Welcome to First United Lutheran Church. This is the message from Sunday. It's our prayer that this message touches your heart and helps to guide you in your life. Let's listen. First of all, I believe the youth are selling potatoes after church today. You can order them and five seconds later pick them up on your way out the door. I think they're a dollar a pound if I remember right from the bulletin, um, but it is in there. Also a couple of things that are in the bulletin that um, we should pay special attention to. Church directory, uh, somebody took charge of that and thank you for doing that. But um, they did put a deadline on getting your pictures and information in, so please do that. We know that we all like to look at the directory and see who's who or contact people. Probably a little bit shy to get our information in there. Obviously, if we don't get our information in there, it's a really tough time to figure out who we're looking for when it's not there, right? So if you could uh, join in with that, that'd be great. Uh, another thing is uh, council elections are coming up in January, I believe, if I remember right. And there's a little blip about that in the bulletin. Uh, Halloween, uh, I think we got, uh, tr is a trunk or treat still, or did we change the name there? But um, if you want to donate to that, there's a little blip about that. And then Operation uh, Christmas Child is started off. We need to get that uh, rolling early so we can get those things shipped and so they get there in time for Christmas. And then lastly, um, October is Pastor Appreciation Month. So as we uh, think about what we can do for Dean, let's uh, make sure that we uh, try to do something personal or um, let them know how you appreciate them. And even if it takes a little bit extra time since we're getting near the end of October, I'm sure he'll uh, take compliment into November this year. I, di I didn't talk to him about that, but I think he would. You guys are the best. I'm very appreciative. So thank you. Well, thank you, Dean. We'd, uh, at least I definitely am glad you're here leading us. Lastly, oh. Uh, that was for what you have done. That was for what you have done, so, or one of the things. Lastly, for anybody that's coming in late, you can rest easy since they're doing the uh, flooring in the office area. The front row is taken, so you don't have to worry about sitting in the front row. And that is all the announcements I had. Does anybody have anything else they want to let everybody know? Quilt raffle this afternoon and Malung pork roast uh, 4.30 to 7 this afternoon as well. Everyone hear that? If you I didn't know, say amen to oh. that. I saw a movie last night. It's amazing. Excellent. Two votes for the Forge. If you don't know what to do with your significant other, go to Malung. After Malung, go to the movie hall and watch a movie. The Forge. It's very good. Comes highly recommended. Hundred percent of the people that spoke about it recommended it. <laughs> uh, as we look uh, to our prayer list, please keep uh, Paula Peterson, Sally Olson, Marilyn, Donnie, Luis, John, and Joanne, and also um, Ken Hayden's cousin, Nate, is going into surgery, so he needs some extra prayers. And then um, Gary and Minnie are the um, missionaries that we closely support down in Mexico, they can always use prayers. It's always a, a definitely a tough time doing what they're doing. And please uh, join me in opening prayer. Lord, we gather today to worship and praise you through song and prayer. 
We want to know your ways better by studying your word. You provide for our physical and emotional needs and protect us from the evils we know and the evils we are not aware of. You are watching over us all the time and nothing escapes you. We ask for forgiveness of sins that we have committed in action and thought. We ask that you guide people to elect leaders of this country that follow your commandments and understand how important you are to the welfare of the United States. We ask that you help the people of Russia, Ukraine, and the Middle East countries that are at war. We know every day people are dying from war and is devastating for the families affected. Please provide comfort for them for their losses. Amen. If you can uh, join me in Psalms 144, 9 through 15. I will sing a new song to you, my God. On the ten string lyre, I will make music to you, to the one who gives victory to kings, who delivers his servant David. From the deadly sword, deliver me. Rescue me from the hands of foreigners, whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hands are deceitful. Then our prayer, then our sons in their youth will be like well-nurtured plants. Our daughters will be like pillars carved to adorn a palace. Our barns will be filled with every kind of provision. Our sheep will increase by the thousands, by the ten thousands in our fields. Our oxen will draw heavy loads. There will be no breaching of walls, no going into captivity, no cry of distress in our streets. Blessed is the people of whom this is true. Blessed is the people whose God is the Lord. Now we'll have opening music. And I expect everyone to sing along because we have a lot of people up here singing, so nobody will even hear you. So please sing if you're thinking that somebody will hear you and you want to be quiet. Uh, please stand as you're able, and uh, we'll sing this one together. It's, uh, we've, we've sung this one a few times before, and uh, this is just a joyous song of, uh, of love, uh, giving it back to God talking about his love being uh, amazing, steady, and unchanging, all of that. So here we go. Your love is amazing, steady, and unchanging. Your love is a mountain burn beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me. When I am surrounded, your love carries me.
I get the drummer queued up for the next song, congratulate somebody next to you. Uh, tell them they look really good for this time of day or, or something. If, if you're able to uh, remain standing, we do have one more. And uh, this song is, it's an old song. We put it on, a, on an album many years ago. Uh, there's nothing really fancy about this. This is a quote straight from Christ. And uh, it's not any embellishments in it whatsoever. It's just talking about what are the priorities in our life, what we're aiming for, what our goals are, that kind of a thing. Um, these words came from somebody who was living a very difficult life in an almost impossible time. And there's probably some here this morning who feel you are also living a very difficult life in a nearly impossible time. And so this is an opportunity to just hit the brake, stop, give a little bit of consideration to the, uh, to the words of Christ, whoever would be first among you.
Well, thank you very much, Praise Band. You guys did a great job of leading us. I think everyone was singing, too. That was a good job out there. I did not hear you, but I could see your mouths moving and look like you're having fun. Hopefully, everybody's awake by now. If you're sleeping, why don't you raise your hand, and we'll make sure you guys get an extra cup of coffee next Sunday morning. Uh, if the children want to come on up for a message... Check, 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 check. Oh, yeah, there we go. There we go. fine-looking group that we have out here today. Uh, we got a, we have a lesson for you today. I tell you what, this story comes from the swamps of Skyme. Scary. I've been there. I was lost out there. I fell in the mud out there one time. And, uh, and also, uh, they're almost as scary as the swamps of Malung. By the way, Kids, make sure you talk to your mom and your dad and your uncle and your grandma into a fine meal out at Malung today. And afterwards, go for a walk in the swamp and check it out about this story, which is called the Itsy Bitsy Frog. That's you, Kermit. Music, please. Maestro. Well, there was, there was a little froggy that lived out in a bog. There also was a snake that lived on a log. And you could, you could see, see the snake's eyes shine right through the fog. And the froggy's mom said, Junior, don't go near that log. That's what she said. But. Well, the little, little bitty froggy, froggy, he went out, he went for, out a for a swim. swim. It, it was, was getting, getting dark, dark, and the lights light were getting, getting dim. dim. And, and then he heard the snake come, come calling out to him. The snake said, come, come and join, join me, froggy, froggy for, for supper on my, on my limb. La, 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 la. Well, well, the little, little bitty froggy, froggy, he made a bad mistake. He was, it was getting hungry, hungry so, so he, he swam, swam up, up to the, the snake. snake. And, and the snake, snake he, he grabbed him and, and he put, he him, put him on to bake. And, and the itsy bitsy froggy became a froggy, froggy cake. cake. La, 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 la. Now the music, so be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. For the father up above. He is looking down in love, so be careful, little eyes, what you see. And be careful, little feet, where you go. Yeah, be careful, little feet, where you go. Because the Father up above is looking down with love, so be careful, little feet, where you go. And that's the end of the lesson for today. Bye. Uh, Scott, he's got some goodies for you, and he's very good at making sure everybody gets plenty. There's no Grinch up here, that's for sure.
That's an empty. That's, a, that's an empty box. <laughs> Uh, how are you doing, Katie? Here's, here's what we got. One of these or none? Well, you can have a pink one. Okay. No? <laughs> Good man. All right, what do we got next, Scott? All right, next up is put my glasses on, and then I think we're going to do an uh, offering. Hey, that's a good thing to do. Continue with a confession. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are loving and gracious to forgive my sins that I have been for you today. I have sinned against you in my thought, words, and daily actions. In business and in my daily life, I have fallen short of your glory and have not been the kind of person you want me to be. Forgive me and cleanse me from all my sins. Thank you that Jesus has paid the price for my forgiveness, and I now lay down my life before you. Bring me to the place that I please you, both in body and soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We read in 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. God declares to us in Psalms 103, verses 10 through 12, that he has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our guilty deeds. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great his mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our wrongdoings from us. Amen. The reader. Good morning. The readings for today, uh, first one is Proverbs 26, verses 20 to 28. Without wood, a fire goes out. Without a, without a gossip, a quarrel dies down. 
As charcoal to embers and as wood to fire, so it is the quarrelsome person for kindling strife. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to the innermost parts. Like a coating of silver dross on an earthenware are fervent lips with an evil heart. Enemies disguise themselves with their lips, but in their hearts they harbor deceit. Though their speech is charming, do not believe them. For seven abominations fill the hearts. Their malice may be concealed by deception, but their wickedness will be exposed to the assembly. Whoever digs a pit will fall into it. If someone rolls a stone, it will roll back on them. A lying tongue hates those it hurts, and a flattering mouth works ruin. The second reading, Revelation 6, <coughs> 9 through 11. When we opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony, the testimony they had maintained. They called out in a loud voice, How long, sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and, the, and avenge our blood? Then each of them was given a white robe. And they were told to wait a little longer until the full number of their fellow servants, their brothers, and their sisters were killed just as they had been. So ends the reading. Thanks. <clears throat> so a couple of quick things before we uh, share the Apostles' Creed. But let's rise. <clears throat> uh, I wanted to say on behalf of the youth group, thank you many, many, many times over for your generosity. Uh, last Sunday, I'll let, you know, uh, the, the, the amount, I think, was almost $1,600, and that's an amazing record. Um, uh, it just, it almost brings tears to my eyes thinking about the generosity of the sacrificial giving of people. So, bless you very, very much for that. Now, Having said that, loosen your purse strings and buy some potatoes on the way out. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, so happy for the work that, that Paula does with the youth and uh, just a superb group of young people there, growing, seems, all the time. So um, keep them in your prayers. Let's confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll read the, uh, the gospel lesson this morning. Uh, it comes to us from Matthew chapter 6, 24 through 27, and also chapter 20, verses 25 through 28. Uh, here uh, Jesus is speaking. He says, No one can serve two masters. For either you'll love the one, or hate the one, and you'll love the other one, or you'll be devoted to the one, and you'll despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And therefore I tell you, don't worry about your life. What you will eat, what you will drink, about your body, what you will wear. Isn't life more than food? Isn't the body more than clothes? Said a man who probably only owned one tunic and robe. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or stow away in barns, and yet your Heavenly Father feeds them. And are you not much more, much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? I might say we can, by worrying, subtract a bunch of hours from our life, but... Can any one of us, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? So then we step on, and the, the, uh, the, the theme of the uh, message today is, 
idols and so forth and that kind of a thing. And so that's what the theme of these uh, gospel passages is also about. Uh, the first one dealt with things of this world and uh, possessions and food and raiment and so forth. This one is a little bit uh, more dealing with the ethereal, the uh, non-physical things that we set up as idols in our life. Jesus called them together and he said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. Their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Not so. Instead, whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant. Whoever wants to be first must be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but he came to serve, to give his life as a ransom for many. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for these everlasting, profound thoughts and words. Uh, I pray that truly today we can just take a pause in the midst of the strife that we may be in the middle of this morning and just stop for a second and let your words seep into our troubled souls you love us beyond description and so i pray lord that we can reflect that and give you just a little bit of that back today in jesus name we pray amen so thank you you may be seated i'm gonna do this a little bit differently this morning I want to say, first of all, thank you, truly, for all the prayers um, that you pray for the ministry in this church, of course, for me, but Paula, too, um, and everyone who is involved in service in this church. It's, a, it's not a unique church. Um, when I talked about Christ living a life of um, a difficult life in the midst of impossible days that's what we're in we really are and the situations that arise are impossible to sort out with human wisdom there's no possible way that I on my own or Paula on her own can come up with the words and the uh, the responses that we need to deal with these the situations that, that crop up. Um, thank you for your prayers. They mean an amazing, an amazing amount. Okay, so on to the deal. This morning we are going to talk about a very unlikely passage of Scripture, and I'm going to read that. It's uh, called, a, uh, the message I called is a scarecrow in a cucumber field. Now that's scriptural. You may not believe that, but you just watch here. Jeremiah, hear what the Lord says to you, people of Israel. This is what the Lord says. Do, do not learn the ways of the nations, or be terrified by the signs in the heavens, of, though the nations are terrified by them, because the practices of the people are worthless. They cut a tree out of the forest. A craftsman shapes it with his chisel, then they adorn it with silver and gold, and they fasten it with hammer and nails so that it won't totter, like a scarecrow in a cucumber field. See, I told you it was scriptural. How many of you have ever heard a sermon about a scarecrow in a cucumber field before? Well, here we go. Their idols cannot speak. They must be carried because they can't walk. Don't fear them. They can do no harm and they can't do any good. So there we go. The main point for those of you that are taking notes this morning is this. And we'll kind of build around this thought. That thing that you worship, it is that thing that you will become. So, let's pray again. Lord, I, uh, I ask you to open your word to us this morning. I ask you that, uh, that it just comes to life. Let it drill through. Let it, let it uh, sink 
through to the, to the uh, marrow and the bone of our spirit and make it change us to become more like your son as you work to fashion your disciples into little Christs. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So I, the first question I've got here is, uh, is this. Is it permissible, is it okay for a Christian to make fun of a person's moral stupidity? Um, I think it is. I think, I think Jeremiah was having a little bit of fun here when he talked about these idols that people were worshiping, and he called them a scarecrow out in a, <laughs> in a cucumber field. Now, we've got pumpkin fields around here, but I haven't seen any crow, or, uh, many crows there. I've seen deer in there, but, uh, but I, the, the point is this. Yes, 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 it is okay for us as Christians to have fun in this life. And I tell you what, some of the ideas and the thoughts that are floating around us in the culture today, they are truly worth mocking and laughing about. In fact, I got a couple of examples here. One, uh, this is from a hundred years ago. Now, this is Billy Sunday. He was kind of a, a modern day Elijah. Remember when Elijah was facing down the prophets of Baal up on the Mount of Mount Carmel, and he starts mocking this god that they had, Baal. They're dancing around, cutting themselves, praying that he would send fire. And uh, Elijah, lights Elijah lights into him. Hey, you guys, yell a little louder. He must be off and gone to the bathroom somewhere. Uh, maybe he's on vacation, this kind of a thing. Well, a hundred years ago, there was a different idol that was marching around the streets of America. And believe it or not, he's still here today, that idol. And it was whiskey, alcohol. Alcoholism was so rampant. A hundred years ago. Billy Sunday zeroed in on this. <laughs> and uh, here's a couple of things that he had to say about him. You people are a poor, dirty, triple extract of vice and sin. You're peanut-brained, you're weasel-eyed, you're hog-jowled, beetle-browed, and you're bull-necked lobsters. You're maudlin, brutish, devilish, stinking, bleary-eyed, bloated-faced drunks. And then he lit into the church. He said, I don't expect of you, any of you ossified, petrified, dyed in the wool, stamped on the cork, religious folk to get up and shout. But it'd do you some good. <laughs> so, Billy Sunday. Billy Sunday. Read about Billy Sunday. He's just, he's just fun. Just great. So here's the thing about we get back to these, these scarecrows in a cucumber field. We talk about the idols in our lives. Two little things I'll say about that. One, we pour ourselves into these idols. Uh, we do. We don't see anybody down at Jake's Pizza, of course, carving out little figurines and people take them and worship them and bow down. We don't really have that. But trust me, there are different idols out there. This is one of them. Now, you take a very close look at the suit that the guy is wearing. It's a money suit. Pictures of $100 bills. He's just covered with $100 bills. Money is definitely a God of our modern times. I'll show you one that was mine. Hockey. Not those sticks. I mean, I, yeah, I've got some of my very first sticks that I ever owned. And I think they're cool. I don't worship them. But there was a time, trust me, there was a time in my life when hockey was my idol. And believe me, I poured myself into it. Morning, noon, and night. Studies took a second row. You know, everything in life was gone except for, for hockey. became an idol to me. So we got money, we got hockey, we've got all kinds of different gods. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on those. What I do want to spend some time on is this. Let's go back to the picture of that idol there out in the, out in the field. So take a look at these things that people had invented and they worshipped. And they poured themselves into. This thing 
blows whichever way the wind comes from. The wind comes from the west, that's where it tilts. Comes from the north, that's where it tilts. It has no ability to resist the forces around it. That's what happens when we pour ourselves into an idol. We become unable to resist the forces that are around us. It has no strength of character. It has no purpose. It has no direction. It, it doesn't have a brain that works. Somebody else's brain decided to bring that scarecrow out and set it in the field right there. That's what happens to us when we pour ourselves into an idol. It's other brains that tell us where to go and what to do. They have brains that don't work. They have eyes that, well, these don't even have eyes. But if they did, they wouldn't see anything anyway. They have ears that work just as well as if they're made out of stone. They have hands that don't work. They have feet that don't carry anybody any place. Uh, we get this. We've seen probably movies and images. We're coming up to Halloween. It's like a dead zombie. Not a zombie that's walking around, coming out of the cemetery out in Malung there. But a dead zombie, just flat. There, there's, there's nothing there. Nothing there. People pour themselves into those idols and there is nothing there. Those idols of dollar bills can't get you anywhere. There's nothing wrong with the money. There's physically nothing wrong with a dollar bill. It's not good. It's not evil. It's just a tool. We've talked about that before. But worshiping it is making it as our goal is. There's nothing wrong with a hockey stick. In fact, sports are a very, very excellent way to keep kids occupied and doing good things with their lives instead of destroying themselves. So I'm not down on the, the idea of hockey. What I'm down on is the idea of this thing becoming the idol that we pour ourselves into to the neglect of everything else in our lives. And that truly is what we have a picture of in our society today that uh, cucumber field there. It is a picture of what we see in our society today. Jeremiah saw perfectly down through the ages, through these hundreds of years, through these thousands of years. He saw the idols in the streets of Rome 500 years subsequent to himself. He saw the idols on the streets of San Francisco in 1968. Some of you remember that time. When we see the self-worship going on in the capitals of our states, of our nations, western, eastern, whatever. Bob Dylan, I like the way he puts that. The idea of self-worship, self-importance, worshiping power. He says it this way. Uh, he, whoever that is, he worships at the altar of a stagnant pool. You think of somebody opening the lid on a septic tank, gazing into that mess, seeing their reflection, and when he sees his own reflection, he's fulfilled. <laughs> well, I have seen septic tanks, and there's nothing in there to worship, not even my own reflection, trust me. Trust me, Jeremiah saw all of this. He, he saw it, he knew it. God knew it. I mean, it's, it was God that wrote these, these words. So people pour themselves into their idols. That's the first little point on this. Second little point that I'm going to uh, bring out there today is that people become like their idols. I put it this, like this, yes. The thing that you worship, it is that thing that you will become. Um, when, we when we spend our time worshiping that thing, it infuses itself into us. Now, here's a point, and I'll kind of bring it to a close with this. We're born to achieve things. We love to build things. We love to create things. Different people use different talents different ways. Some people 
knit things with art. I couldn't do that to save my life. Some people are painters. I can't do that to save my life. Some people go with the music. Some people are engineers. Some people uh, are farmers. It's, it's, people have passions. God built us that way. He, he built us. He hardwired us to do things. One of the most hideous forms of torment on earth that has ever been devised is solitary confinement. Because when people are locked there, it's uh, sensory de deprivation. There's no light. There's, no, there's nothing to think about. And that's torture for the brain. There's nothing to build. That's torture. We were created to build things, to do things, to achieve things. Problem is we pour that effort into the wrong things, just like we were talking about, like Jeremiah was talking about. Um, there is something better. There is something better. That's a scripture that comes out of 1 Corinthians 1.11. Well, let's step back just a second. When we pour everything that we have into that God, we become servants of that God, whatever that is, money, hockey, whatever it is. We become the servants of that thing. We give. It takes from us. It uses people whose idols are addictions. You see them enjoying the drugs at first, whatever that drug might be. And yes, there's a kick there problem is pretty soon instead of giving to you that drug is taking from you and it sucks the life out of you and you've seen the pictures of these poor helpless addicts slumped over and dying in the street the idol that they once worshipped is sucking the life right out of them the real God is absolutely the opposite of that the real God pours life into you. The false gods suck the life out of you. The real God pours His life and His soul into us. Night and day difference. Absolutely 180 degrees difference. So we are instructed in the New Testament to be imitators of Christ. Did you know, by instance, and probably most of you do because you've been around the church a lot, the word Christian basically means little Christ. You're an imitator of Christ. It comes out of 1 Corinthians 1.11. Paul says this, Be ye imitators of me, just as I am an imitator of Christ. So that's just a quick little question. Who was I imitating this week? What did I pour my time into this week? How much time did I spend around God's people speaking of the things of God? The growth that comes in our spiritual life comes from our time in the Word, our time in prayer, and our time of fellowship with one another. And no harm in a good movie, too, to stir us toward good things. But whatever we are pouring our effort and our time in, who were we imitating this week? How much time did we pour into God? Last week, you remember that? You can't beat God giving. When you pour into God, he, uh, the scripture goes down, he gives us back in overflowing measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. You can't outgive God. Um, so plain and simple, those are the thoughts that I want to leave us with this morning. The thing that we pour ourselves into, the thing that we worship, that is the thing that we become. And I'm going to share with you, this is a little bit of a new twist, a song that, uh, that I wrote when I was about 19, I think. I was born into the family 
of a vastly cursed race born without inheritance and born into disgrace and I sifted through the rubble what the world had left to me empty words broken dreams madhouse sanity I listened to John Lennon I listened to his friends Heard them blast the world apart And tear it end from end And then I I watched them all become the people They had once condemned I turned away Disillusioned to start my search again I'm a child of adversity I'm a vastly learned man for the lessons learned from being burned they don't slip from my hand my enemies are many though my friends they claim to be they condemn the things I live for they stand and frown at me but I grew up in their family never saw them reaching out to me I well I can't believe their words till I'm given something more than words to see now they look at me with empty eyes and they curse and criticize I've tried the things they recommend I know them all as lies There is only one who's true I finally realize It's for him I live my life And it's for him I'll die. Uh, we'll share communion this morning. It's open communion. All who name the name of Christ are most welcome to come and join us. Now, some of you uh, have got the uh, little kits that we had in the back. And so, um, as I share the words of institution with those, if you have that kit, please share communion with me as we go. Paul writes this. He says, I received it from the Lord, that which I also delivered to you, and that is this, that the Lord Jesus Christ on the night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given that thanks, he broke it and he said, take and eat because this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So let us share together Christ's body. Then in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper and he said this, this cup, is the new covenant in my blood. Do this. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So let us share again together the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For as often 
as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I'd like to invite the ushers and servers to come forward. Let's pray. Now may this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Let's stand and pray together the Lord's Prayer, and then we'll close with our closing hymn. Let's pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So we'll sing our closing hymn, Count Your Blessings. This is the last verse. Okay, let's make it count then. Okay, sorry about that. When you look at others with their lands and gold, think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings money cannot buy. Your reward in heaven or your home on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you truly, truly give you his peace in the name of Jesus in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen go in peace and serve the Lord Amen. thank you for listening to this message from First United Lutheran Church